What happens when you pop a water balloon? Underwater. I've been really curious about this for a while. A regular balloon filled with air pops. As the high pressure air inside the balloon escapes, it goes outward in a loud compression wave. But a water balloon <laughs> is filled with nearly incompressible water, so it should behave really differently underwater, I would think. Since the water in a water balloon popped underwater is invisible, I'll have to use some dye to visualize what's going on. This will largely tell us about the diffusion of the dye in the water balloon, but it should give us at least some hints about what the water's doing too. Once we get a feel of how a room temperature balloon behaves in room temperature water, we'll move on to cold water and hot water too, and see if they're any different. Let's get started with our experiment. First, I got a beaker of clear water, 150 milliliter syringe, and filled up a balloon that I popped. This shot really only gave me one good frame. I tried again with some tweaking and editing manipulation, and I got this shot. Look at how the water essentially holds its shape and those ripples the whole way down. Water is polar. Neighboring water molecules are attracted with hydrogen bonds. When the balloons popped, we can see the effect of the hydrogen bonds because all the perimeter waters pull each other taut, while at the same time being pulled towards the center. This creates what we call surface tension. This essentially pulls the water to have the lowest possible surface area, which is a sphere. We could talk about this a lot, but just watch a NASA video of them showing the shape that water makes in space. It's incredibly cool. Let me clean up my mess. Here's a large beaker of clear water and a small beaker of clear water. Let's get a new box of food coloring and crack it open to get the green dye out. I'll use two drops of dye and stir it really inefficiently with this little anatomy probe. Let's put about 150 milliliters of this 22 degrees Celsius room temperature water in the balloon. Tying small balloons is not a skill I'm very good at, so if you know any tips, let me know in the comments. After the balloon was tied, I did a second knot and slid the shish kebab rod through that. This allowed me to hold the balloon in the middle of the jar. Here it goes. Look at how it popped. I was really anticipating something like our yellow balloon where the dye would hold its shape and slowly diffuse out. If I slow motion the dye pop, you can see what I thought would happen. But in real time, it looks like this. I was a little surprised the dye seemed to stay toward the top of the water and not diffuse so much towards the bottom. What I think was going on was the surface tension that's present when we pop a balloon outside in the air is no longer present when the balloon's down in the water because the balloon is now surrounded by water. And the skin of the balloon actually takes up a little bit of space. So I'm curious if the water actually has a small distance to accelerate to fill that gap because there's a discrepancy in pressure. So it's gonna accelerate out and maybe that's why it doesn't hold its shape quite as well. The green dye is made of a host of things, but I think the main thing that we're seeing is blue number one and yellow number five. Both are way huger than water and have different polarities than water. So naturally the way that they move around by browning in motion and diffuse is gonna be much different than an actual H2O water molecule. And if you have other ideas, let me know. Let's get a new fresh water beaker. This time we'll get out the blue dye and put in two drops. Stir it up and add some ice and cool it to zero degrees Celsius. I forgot to film when I put the thermometer in. Just pretend my finger's a thermometer saying zero degrees Celsius. Let's fill this blue balloon with our ice water. Here's a quick look at how I sort of did the skewer. I'm sorry, it's not the best shot. Let's put it in the water. Do you think this will be any different than the room temperature water? Think the dye will hold its shape a little better or worse? Blue dye is blue number one, which looks like this. Remember green was a mix of blue number one and yellow five, so I'm curious which diffuses faster. Let's see. The more dense cold has a bit more sinking action and moves to the bottom of the beaker a bit better. Here's another trial that showed the cold water drop pretty well. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison. You can see the room temp stays near the top while the cold sinks. The density curve of water is really interesting and looks like this. Water is most dense from around the zero to 20 degrees Celsius mark, 
with a max density of one gram per centimeter cubed at about four degrees Celsius. The water in the beaker should have a density of around 0.998 since it's about 21 degrees Celsius, while the cold water should be closer to the four degrees Celsius mark with a density of one. This means the cold water is slightly more dense and sinks. Why doesn't ice sink? Now I'll leave the big beaker and get a small hot water beaker that's about 53 degrees Celsius. Let's add our food coloring and stir. Then fill our red balloon and put it in our big beaker. What do you think will happen? The 53 degree hot water density is lower at about 0.985 while the 20 degrees Celsius large beaker density is higher at about 0.998. Since the hot water is less dense than the cool water, we see it buoyed to the surface as the water diffuses. Which diffuse faster, do you think? When I watch side by side, they look really similar. YouTube does look for satisfaction signals, so if you could let them know that you like this, uh, just bookmark the channel with a like or a subscribe, that's helpful. If you're overwhelmed with inspiration and want to try this one yourself, I'll put some links to the supplies in the description. And most importantly, can you think of an interesting variation to the experiment that we could do later? Let me know in the comments. Be curious, science on.